This was Pakistan last summer. Devastating floods supercharged by climate change submerged a third of the country. Seventeen hundred people died and millions of lives were disrupted. Pakistan's government has pegged the losses at more than 30 billion US dollars. It's money the country can't afford, and where to go for international support isn't clear. There is absolutely no mechanism within the UN system that addresses climate-induced disaster. I mean, it is shocking. Other countries in the global south, places like Nepal, Bangladesh and Mozambique, are bearing the brunt of climate change without driving it. It all boils down to one question, whether the global north will take responsibility for their historic responsibility. And so far, they have not. We believe that they must be held accountable and liable. The push from the global south is on. It will be a central issue at this year's International Climate Change Conference. The question is, will wealthy countries step up and pay for climate disasters? You tell me the government in the world that has trillions of dollars, because that's what it costs. Those are the estimates for what climate events will cost developing countries, well into the hundreds of billions, even trillions by 2030. Countries in the global south most ravaged by climate change have been calling for funding for almost three decades to cover losses and damages. When you look at the countries who are causing the problem, it's literally just a handful of countries. Historically, North America has emitted a quarter of all carbon put into the atmosphere. In contrast, Pakistan has contributed less than 1%. Even if these vulnerable nations further curb their emissions, they will still face unavoidable loss and damages from climate disasters. The reality is climate change is a threat multiplier. It takes all the other problems we have, whether they're resource related, economic, issues of equality, and it makes them worse. We need to figure out a way to not only address the economic loss and damage that, that we face, as well as the non-economic that includes life, health, education, all of these different aspects, your connection to land is another crucial thing that you completely lose when you have sea level rise. In 2009, the world's wealthiest countries pledged 100 billion US dollars per year by 2020 to help the global south deal with climate change. The money is a mix of government grants, loans and private finance aimed at lowering emissions, conserving nature and helping adapt to future climate disasters. But that commitment has never been met. The current goal is to get to 100 billion by 2023, but that's a drop in the bucket compared to what's needed. And that funding isn't for loss and damages. What are the other solutions on the table? Germany has proposed a G7 fund called the Global Shield, a program to help countries get insurance for recovery after climate disasters. There are concerns that such a system are, is going to profit uh, insurance com company executives more than communities in the Global South. Negotiators from the Global South want a firm pledge of public money. At the end of the day, these finance need to be public. Private is driven with the sense of making profit, but we are, make, we are being driven by the sense to protect and ensure that the future generation is going to have the future. Some countries have made pledges on their own. Scotland offered £2 million last year to address loss and damage, while Denmark has pledged 100 million Danish kroner, about 18 million Canadian dollars. But at this year's climate conference in Egypt, the Global South is looking for a wider commitment from wealthy nations, not just individual pledges. We won't leave COP27 um, with, a, with a sense of success if that doesn't happen. It's right time to move beyond endless discussions. Loss and damage are happening now and must be addressed now, starting at COP27. This is a fundamental question of climate justice. Having this conference in Africa 
Where many of those countries are is a place to truly hold a conversation about the injustice and inequity of who's causing climate change and who's bearing the brunt of the impact. What we were demanding is for really from the global north to unlearn everything they think they know that we need and listen to what we know we need. It is quite important for us to note that um, that that having that backing of the people um, has kind of begun to start to force the hand of developed countries who has, okay, climate is not a future thing. It is also affecting us right now. The impacts of climate disasters are piling up in Pakistan and around the world. And there's urgent need for an answer. Will rich nations step up with lives on the line?